Hi everybody, it's Amy Ko from Snark Heart and I'm here today to talk to you about a wonderful product that I have been playing with the last few weeks and absolutely falling in love with. And if you're anything like me, you have been really confused as to what this is and what the heck you do with it. So I'm gonna give you a quick primer. No, that's a lie. It's not quick, it's me. You know I can't do much of this quick anything. So I'm gonna give you a primer on what I have learned about Unicorn Spit and what it means to you as a crafter and maker and why I think you need to get this. Um, I will say I am not being paid to say any of this. I'm um, not a sponsor or anything. I am just a lover of the product. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So I, uh, a while back, went to my local Fred Meyer, Kroger, for those of you around the other, other parts of the country, and everyone had been talking about unicorn spit. I'm like, what the heck is this stuff? And I saw they had red unicorn spit on the um, over in the paint aisle, because I always check out spray paint. I'm a spray paint addict. And I got it, and I got that, and I got white because it was near Christmas time. And um, I got home and I got intimidated, and then I just put it away with all of my acrylic paints. And then I moved and I didn't see it for a really long time. So um, when Laura and I hooked up a few weeks ago, she told me how much she loves Unicorn Spit and that she uses it on everything. This is a girl who lives in North Dakota where it is snowy more often than not. I mean, I, I don't even wanna think about what the snow is like over there because, well, I'm a Montanan, former Montanan, and I know what she's dealing with. But she said she does these all these beautiful, vibrant colors with Unicorn Spit, and I really needed to give it a second chance. So I thought, okay, fine. Uh, for my people, I'm going to go ahead and invest. So I bought a pack of their colors, and, and it was the big pack. It had tons and tons of colors. And I'm like, okay, these are cool, but I still don't know what to do. So they sat there in the box for a while. And then one day it was raining cats and dogs because it is Oregon after all. And I really wanted to work on some bookshelves for you guys. I know, crazy, me and bookshelves. And uh, I thought, well, what the heck? I'm gonna break out the unicorn spit. How bad can I screw anything up, right? So I did. And um, I grabbed some green and some yellow and some brown, and I just started playing with it. And I put some yellow in the center and then a little bit of green here, and I started dabbing and moving. And, and suddenly I got beautiful, beautiful effects with this really kind of modest product. I was like, wow, that's kind of cool. So over time, I started playing more and more with it and, and reading up more and watching YouTubes and um, finding out that this is a remarkable product and you can do so many things with it. Uh, the woman who invented it uh, invented this as a non-toxic, oops, I dropped one there, I wanted to show you, non-toxic, um, it's fast drying and water-based and it's scented. And let me tell you, it smells freaking fantastic. I was using some the other day uh, and my husband thought I had spray painted, but it didn't smell bad. He's like, what is that? And I told him and he's like, all right, buy as much as you want, get all the unicorn spit you want because it doesn't smell like spray paint. And it's, it's really great and it's really versatile. So um, I said, okay, well, you told me to buy more. So I did. Uh, I went and I bought all of the sparkly ones as well. So um, as time kind of progressed, I started to work more on some of my um, animal inspired designs that I hear wizards like. And I took and rubbed the edges with the color and then brought it in towards the center. And well, that didn't, that was too dark here. So I took my tools and I was able to wipe that color away and get the beautiful effect that I wanted. I was like, wow, this is really neat. So I played and I played some more and I thought, oh, I'd like my lion to have a little bit of sparkle. I don't know if you can see that, I hope you can. Um, but I was able to add some sparkle. I was like, gosh darn, this stuff is amazing. And the same kind of thing. I'm like, what, what can't this do? And honestly, as far as I can tell, there's nothing you can't do with this product. So, um, so then I decided, okay, I like some pastels. So I broke out my white spit. It seems so funny to say I'm spitting all over my project, but I really am. I want to bring that light over there so you can see. Um, 
I'll move that back in a second. But I started with white in the center and then I started with my green and just kind of started bringing it in towards the center and then just blending and playing with it. And I got these amazing, gorgeous pastel effects with two colors in a washcloth and some water. Um, so, and, and then it, it just played and played and got these beautiful kind of sunset effects. And then um, I thought, well, what the heck? I would love for this to look like the universe. And so I started playing with, um, I'd heard you can put alcohol and your spit together and spray it on. I hope you can see that. I'm going to demonstrate this as well. I got some dog fuzz on this. But um, if you can't really see it in there, it's got kind of a nebulous effect. And it is so freaking beautiful. And I just can't stop singing the praises of stupid unicorn spit. So here we are and here we go. Um, there are many different kinds. There are your solid colors, like so. Um, and then they also have metallics, which I don't have any of yet. I have other ways to accomplish metallic and I probably will buy some in the future. But um, I did get, when John said, go ahead and get all the colors I want, I said, okay. And I got myself some of the sparkle effects. So here's your regular, here's your sparkle. Um, I just, I have a huge collection now. Um, and I've used every one of the colors and I just can't find anything bad to say about them. So uh, I'll go over some of the different things you can and can't do with this. So when you are using your unicorn spit, um, it goes on really bright and vibrant, but as time goes by, it kind of, the color fades just a little bit as it dries. And that is, that's just the nature of the beast. This is something, this is a technique I'll show you in a little bit. But um, after you have done your technique, this isn't 100% permanent. Now, if it's going to be in the back of one of your little bookshelves where it's not going to get touched or fiddled with, you don't have to seal it. But sealing also brings those colors to that really bright, vibrant look that uh, you'll see going on in just a little bit here. So um, you do want to seal this, like I said, if it's going to be handled or if you want it to be really bright and vibrant. So you can use furniture paste, um, paste wax. This smells lovely. I put it on, buff it on, and then let it kind of get milky and then buff it on, buff it into the product. That is beautiful. You can use um, a non-water-based sealer. If you use a water-based sealer, it can change the color of your work. Um, I haven't done it yet, so I don't know how bad it's gonna fuck things up. Um, just don't, just don't do it. That's all I can say. Uh, so you can use your spray sealers. You can use a brush on sealer. And because you know it's me and because you know I'm super duper obnoxious and I am a fifth grader in a 48 year old body, I of course use holographic glitter top coat from uh, Montana hologram, Montana gold. Actually, this is Montana black. Um, so the Montana hologram, uh, because it's sparkly and pretty and what fifth grader does not like glitter? I'm telling you. So um, I've sealed my things in and I get this beautiful long lasting effect. So now that I've kind of given you a little bit of an idea of what Unicorn Spit is, I say we just go ahead and dive in and play just a little bit with some of the different ways to apply this to our materials. So a lot of times people will use a wet baby wipe um, since I'm a lot removed from baby wipe phase. Supposedly in a week and a half, my youngest is moving out. And so I'm going to be an empty nester. Uh, so I'm really, really far past baby wipe stage. I've just been using a, a microfiber washcloth. I usually pick these up at TJ Maxx, Ross, Home Goods, any of those. Pick up a pack of them for like a whole bunch of them for like six bucks. So if it goes tits up, I'm not too concerned. But of course, it is in Snarky's favorite color, Tiffany Blue. Um, you just can't go wrong with Tiffany, right? So um, one of the keys to making unicorn spit work really nicely is water. Water is going to help you move the product around your material. It's going to help you um, blend things really nicely. It's also going to help you remove some of the spit if you don't want it where it is. Another great thing, as long as it's not sealed, you can continue to move this product around. So if you're working on a project and you don't like it, go to bed, go to bed, sleep on it. And when you get up in the morning, if you still don't like it, you take your wet washcloth and you wipe it off or you blend it some more, you add some more colors. As long as it's not sealed, you can do anything. And 
honestly, once it's sealed, you can probably work on top of that as well. I haven't yet. I'm going to move that light again. Sorry, everybody. Um, okay. You just know I'm freaking in love with this stuff. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I have a little bowl here that's just got some plain regular water and my microfiber washcloth. And I'm just going to take and get this damp. Um, I'm kind of just soaking it here and then squeezing it out because you don't want it to be like soggy, soggy. If you're into ASMR, you'd probably hear I'll squeeze this out for you guys. Oh, yeah. There's your ASMR for the day. Oh, yeah. Let's look at that. Oh, I can whisper too. Okay, sorry. That was for say a word. Um, hi, Sadie. I hope you're watching this because I did that just for you. Okay, so... I'm gonna take just a little piece of scrap wood. I do have to say, if you're gonna practice with this stuff and just kind of get a feel for it, grab some scrap out of your um, out of your scrap pile and play with this. Another amazing thing about Unicorn Spit is a little goes a long ways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this gorgeous blue thunder. I'm gonna give it a little shake and then open the, the twisty top up and just give a little squeeze. Come on, maybe I will, maybe I won't. There we go. So you can see that's, you know, less than a pea size amount, just a tiny bit here. I'm just gonna kind of rub it together so it's not a big glob of it. And so now I've got two areas that I can actually work with. I'm gonna take, and from the edge, it's gonna start with the darker parts and go from the edge and just start wiping this on. So you can see how absolutely beautiful and saturated these colors are. Now, you're probably thinking, Amy, your fingers are getting filthy and gross. Well, you know what? I could work with gloves on, but um, that's just not a way that makes me happy. And quite honestly, yeah, my hands are going to be a little stained when I'm done. But if I hop in the shower afterwards, all of this is just going to come right out and right off. So, so, you could, so uh, don't worry about getting stained and messy. I probably don't wear your favorite shirt, but wear silk to scrap or craft anyways, right? So as you can see, I've already got a nice coverage. You can see the grain of the wood. If you don't want to see that, you can use it more like a paint. So, but I'm going to go ahead and work with this and see, I'm going to work the edges a little more. And I've got pretty nice coverage here, but that's, I mean, yeah, that's nice. But what can we do to make this look even better? Well, I got a little darker than I wanted. So I'm just going to take and use my wet part here. Look at that, and just wipe that off a little bit. I'm going to add just a tad more of the blue. Instead of working around the edges, I'm going to work from the bottom up, and we're going to kind of make it look a little bit like a twilight sky. So I'm going to dab that on, and look at how beautiful and dark that is at the bottom there. Isn't that pretty? So working up, it's getting a little lighter. Work around the edge. It's a little darker than I wanted, so I'm just going to go back in with the wet. Wipe it down a little. Okay, so I've got this already this pretty kind of gradient look. I'm gonna use the same area and go ahead and grab a little bit of this amazing um, Pixie Punk Pink. This is my personal favorite, uh, probably because it's one of snarky colors. And again, I shook this up earlier. I've already done a little bit of practicing before we got together. Again, our little glob right there. Rub it together. My washcloth is still a little bit damp. And then just come in and start blending. And blend, blend, blend. I feel like a little bit like Bob Ross here. Happy little skies. Look at that though. Look at, it's just starting to really come to life. Um, I wish you guys could smell this. Oh, I've still got some here right here on my washcloth. I wish you guys could smell how great this is. So see, I got these kind of dots it's kind of ugly and dotty. I'm just going to take, though, and just kind of buff it in. Buff around. And then I want maybe like a lighter spot in the center. Use a little bit of that. Tiny bit more pink. I might be being a little bit conservative. I'm still kind of getting the hang of this. But There, and see how it blends together and makes this really beautiful kind of purple. Now I'm gonna come in here, move that up in there. And I'm actually going to use just a little bit, oh, there's some more pink on my washcloth there. Can you see that? So just take, work it in. I 
I know that um, people like Misa, she likes to see the grain of the wood quite a bit. Um, I, don't, I don't have anything against it. I kind of like to get things a little more saturated. So now I'm going to come in with just a little bit of orange and we're going to see what happens there. Shake, 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 shake. Go for another little, kind of a little less colored spot here. You know how sunsets kind of get orangey at the top? Well, we're going to see what happens here. See how bad I can screw this up. Okay, so I went in pretty, pretty hard and heavy there. Not as crazy about that. This is going to be a great way to show you that if you're not crazy about something, just blend, 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 and you're going to get something really pretty regardless of what you came up with. So we'll add some pink. And just keep working until you get what you want. The beauty is there's just no wrong answers, especially when you're making art. There we go. Now it's starting to look a little bit sunsetty. See, I like got kind of a gradient there, so it looks like the top of the sunset. I want to add a little bit more orange in here. Get that kind of peachy sky there. And it's, as you can see, I mean, I didn't really go in with a major plan here, but you can see it's just blending together and making this really pretty look without, you know, as much as anything, it's just playing, you know? I think a lot of what happens when we become adults is we kind of lose that element of play and it's so good for us. There we go. So maybe that wasn't the perfect decision, but as you can see, you can just keep playing with it until you get something that looks fantastic. Okay, so that is the first. So again, a washcloth, a damp washcloth. As you can see, my fingers get a little stained. They're gonna come, it's gonna come right off. Um, damp washcloth or a baby wipes, squeeze it on, mush it together, and then just dab and play. Okay, so that's technique number one. Okay, next technique that I really think is so pretty is a watercolor type technique. This is, I'm gonna go up just a little bit here so you can see my project a little bit more. Tighten this guy up. Oh, oh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. All right, there we go. Um, this, is, this is from my pretend try at farmhouse look. Um, I did not... I didn't get very far with that because you guys know I'm probably just way too dang snarky for that. But a um, little Irish prayer for the just recent St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to take and make a, a watercolor look with this. When you're blending your unicorn spit with alcohol, you want to use 70%. If you use 90%, some of the colors don't blend as nice. Um, I think it's the titanium in them. The yellow and the white get kind of gloopy, um, gloppy. It's just not as nice. And you can pick up your 70% alcohol at the dollar store. So about 25, it's going to last you a long time. So I'm going to give just a little bit of a squirt of, let's see, we'll go in this one here. A little bit of a squirt of unicorn spit. Close that up so I don't spill it and a little zhuzh of alcohol in there. And this is really nice and buildable. So if your color is going on really too light, a lot lighter than you'd like, you can just build that up. So I'm just gonna take my paintbrush, it's a cheap little paintbrush, mix this together. And I'm gonna use just a little test it here, see if that's too bright. Oh no, that's pretty. Ooh, that's not pretty, actually, I lied. I think my paintbrush is dirty. Whoops. Let's see. There we go. So that's a little pinker than what I'd like. So I'm just going to add a teeny little drop of orange. Just the littlest bit. Oops, you probably can't see because my hand's in the way. That. And then I'm going to soften it with a little bit of white. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Yeah, come on, you. Maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. There we go. Get aggressive with it, Amy. There we go. And just take my paintbrush and mixy mix. And you can see that's kind of getting a little bit peachy there. 
little lighter. Okay. And you can just take and brush that on. Oh, that's pretty. So just take and brush. And now I've gone a little too far, so I know. I probably should have practiced this part a little bit more, but here we are, you're stuck now. Okay, this is gonna be a little too saturated, so I'll add a little more alcohol. Um, I, I think uh, more is more when it comes to alcohol with the watercolor. Whoop, there's a little bit crazy, but you get the point. So, okay, there we go. That's gonna be prettier. That's nice. See how it's very watercolory there? So I'm just gonna take and watercolor in these clover just ever so softly just like that this uh this wood is really kind of bleedy this is something i was using last year so this is something i made last year like i said during my failed failed farmhouse sign moment so this probably isn't the wood i would normally use i this probably isn't a baltic birch um but as you can see, it just, it's really a beautiful look in there. Boy, that is bleedy, bleedy. Some woods are better than others for using like watercolor technique. But you're kind of getting the idea that it's just a really subtle look. I'm gonna reach the bottom there and maybe pick up a little more of that color in the bottom of my thing. Oh, that's nice. So. All right, well, this is kind of a crummy one to explain to uh, pr practice on because it's really bleeding. But you get the idea that you can really do amazing watercolor looks. So I'm going to show you too how you can really build those colors up more. So I just kind of dug down to the bottom and see how I'm just building up that color. So um, that's technique number two: painting with seventy percent alcohol and unicorn spit. If you are wondering as well about this little silicone mat, this guy is just the tits. Uh, it's easy to clean up. As you see, it's got the little vessels for painting. Um, I have another one that's got a vessel for cleaning your paint brushes. I got one from Amazon and one from Timu. I'm really happy with this. It protects my surface nicely and I can even stick it in the dishwasher. Not that you ask. Okay, so next technique is the spray paint technique like I used on the owl here. Wow, I've been talking to you guys for 20 minutes. Lucky devils. Okay, so I took and got these cheap little atomizers from the dollar store. It was two atomizers for a buck 25. Uh, I'm just gonna clean this nozzle off because I think it might get clogged. And I squirted a little bit, probably about that much, maybe even less of unicorn spit into my atomizer and then filled the rest of it up with alcohol, gave it a good shake. And now I can spray this onto my surface. This is a great way to do uh, sunsets and the universe, all of those kind of things. So what I do first is I start with a nice base of white spray. This is going to let me pastel the colors up. Um, oh, <laughs> well, that's surprising. Okay, well, don't buy cheap atomizers from the dollar store because they will shit the bed on you. So that's delightful. <laughs> Okay, um, I use a paintbrush here. Just gotta move this into my product. Oh my god! If anything can go wrong, it will, right, kids? Oh my goodness! So <laughs> normally this would be such a pretty effect, but I'm just getting my wood kind of wet and primed with the white. Um, <laughs> so you can see what the heck is going on. Normally this would be so much prettier. So I've got this gorgeous. Uh, sapphire blue again or blue thunder yet again and I'm gonna and hopefully hopefully my sprayer doesn't go to bed go to shit on me I'm gonna take and just spray the edges there we go yay see how that's kind of just blending in with that alcohol and getting really neato looking Let's scooch those back just a little bit here so got that color next I'm gonna come in and move this around like so and I'm gonna come and spray a little bit of purple, kind of from the edge. See, see how this is starting to blend together just a little bit there? I really wish my white one was still working. This is very disappointing. 
Ooh, look at that though. See how it's bubbling up and moving? You get some really cool effects with this. Now, if you wanna see this changing even more, you could just use another atomizer with just plain alcohol in it. And spray like so, move it around, let it, there we go. Getting some cool effects there. And as that dries and starts to meld together and become something even more beautiful, you get a really nifty kind of universe look with this. So I'm gonna let it go like that, give it a little more spray. It smells so good in here. Okay, see that's really starting to look, it's starting to move together. This is one of those things that when it dries, it gets even prettier. I'm just gonna use my paintbrush and just go ahead and move it a tiny bit. You don't have to use a paintbrush, I don't usually, but I had it here. And then to add some more depth, I'm just gonna hit it with a tiny bit of pink. I'm straying way back here with this pink. There we go. Now, if it's looking too purple, you just come in here and spray some more blue and just, again, as with everything with this, I'm gonna go way back and go over the top. As with everything with Unicorn Spit, Keep working until you get what you want or walk away. No wrong answers. Once this fully dries, I would come in here with a toothbrush dipped in either white acrylic or unicorn spit, oddly enough, and just brush it, fan it across and give these really cool star effects. Um, I, I hope this is looking as cool to you guys as it really is in real life because this is really, really pretty. I would probably come in and hit it with a little more blue and a touch way far back touch of pink can you see it there there we go and then just let this dry and then see what you think if you think that the colors aren't what you want them to be go ahead and use your washcloth and blend it in and blend it out or use more of your sprays whatever the case may be you just keep messing with it until you get something absolutely gorgeous there we go. I'm gonna let that dry and I'll send you guys, I'll show you guys pictures on the VIP group of how these finish out when they're done. It's kind of hard to see with the glare there, but that is gonna look absolutely freaking fantastic when it dries out. Okay, I'm gonna just take my washcloth here and wipe up my surface a bit because I'm gonna step into uh, the last technique for tonight. Not This will not be the last class on this probably because I'm sure I'll be learning lots of cool new things and I'm gonna to wanna to share with you guys. So I'm not gonna get this surface totally perfectly clean. Um, it doesn't really matter here. So I'm gonna take this round of wood. Um, I'm gonna practice on the back side here. Well, no, looks like I already screwed up the front. Okay, so nice piece of uh, sand fly from Home Depot and a glass plate. So I was gonna, oh, 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 you know what? I gotta go back for a second. You don't, you cannot put your metallic inks into acrylic. I learned that the hard way. I put my goo in the bottom and I put my alcohol on top and it looks so beautiful. It looked kind of like a, um, a lava lamp and it was so pretty and I went to shake it up and it looked great and it wouldn't spray because the mica flakes in this are just so big it will not go through and get atomized. I could be wrong, there may be other ways to do it, but as far as I can tell, you cannot put your metallic or your sparkly ones in alcohol and spray it on, much to my dismay. It's not to say you can't dot it on and you know blend it in later on to get that sparkle effect, but just beware, you can't put it in your atomizer. Okay, and then I was gonna tell you one other thing too. If I could only get four colors and hues to start with, I would start off with the Pixie Pink, the Blue Thunder, and this bright Lemon Kiss Yellow, and then some white. Um, these, these are going to be the key to the universe. You could do the red, but I kind of find I prefer the pink, uh, partly just because it's me, and pink is the best thing on the planet right next to glitter. So um, I'm going to take and place little globs of this on a glass plate. This is a glass plate I just got from Dollar Tree. A lot of my products and my uh, materials come from Dollar Tree, A, because it's really close to me, and because it's freaking cheap, and I'm gonna ruin shit anyway, so might as well. Um, 
So, and, and actually you can engrave on Dollar Tree plates, just engrave on the bottom backwards and da, 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 da. I did that in a glow forge. And if you don't like the message, tough shit. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a little glob of pink right here. We're going to go just kind of close that up so I don't spill it. And then uh, my son is upstairs complaining about someone at Dairy Queen and then a glob of yellow. Yes, we're getting great and primary with it, people. And a glob of blue. I'm going to leave myself some space over here so that later on when I'm working, I can, well, you'll see. Okay. Um, come on, glob of blue. There you go. Come on, baby. You know you want to. Oh, maybe it helps if I do it the right way. <laughs> okay. So, you got your pretty much primaries. We're just going to call them pretty much primaries. Well, I'm getting to be quite the mess here. Now, these cheesy, cheap little brushes, again, Dollar Tree, two came in a pack, so two pack for a buck 25. If I was just working by myself, I would get this wet in the sink and, and um, shake it out so it's almost a dry brush feel. You don't want a lot of water in this. I don't, I'm not near my sink right now because I'm playing with you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip this in my little bucket of water here and then shake it out on my floor. Because I really, again, just want this as tiniest bit damp. See, it's still too wet. So shaky, shaky. And barely wet. And then I'm going to take my paintbrush. By the way, I'm going to back the truck up here just a second. Um, this technique comes from our, again, our amazing Laura Jean. When you see this video, pop on over to the board and tell her how much you love her. I just think she is absolutely, she's better than pockets on a dress. So you, if you get a chance, you tell my Laura Jean that I just love her to pieces. And you do too, because she's the tits. So this is Laura Jean's technique, and it is gorgeous, and just you wait. So I'm going to take this brush that's just the tiniest bit damp, and my little glob of pink, and I'm just going to start spreading it on my plate. Look at that pretty, pretty pink. I feel so Bob Rossi right now. I'm just going to kind of really work that into my bristles and set this to the side a little. Looking at my grain, I'm gonna go side to side and start kind of in the center here and just start working my, my unicorn spit in like so. So I'm gonna kind of go up this way just a smidge just to kind of get where we're gonna to get to the top. So as you can see, it's already maybe just a touch, teeny, teeny, teeny touch of water. So, oh yeah, there we go. Move that around. Now, let's see. We all remember second grade and blending our colors. We're gonna come in here in the pink and grab a little bit of that yellow. So we start moving into making orange land. Okay, so let's make sure you know we're going here. I'm gonna start working it. I like the way you work it, no diggity. Oh God, sorry, I promise I will not sing. Not quite enough water. Move that in there, just bring a little bit more. I like the way you work it. Okay, so now, I wanna pick up some more of that yellow. Look at how those colors are coming together. So I'm just gonna take and rinse this out. Normally I would rinse it in my sink, um, but I'm not, again, near it. So I'm just gonna take and rinse it out in my little bucket. Da, 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 da. Dab, 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 and dabbing that on my washcloth again. So getting a lot of that water out. Now I'm gonna come into the yellow, come in beautiful yellow land, and start to pick up a little edge of that blue. And watching where my edge is, I'm gonna come in and start working how we get this beautiful green. Now look, I don't love what's going on here. I need to bring some more of the yellow in. So I'm just gonna rinse this out. Look at how the pretty the colors are coming out on the plate even. I'm just gonna rinse this out and give a little more glob of yellow it's okay if it's in orange land a little bit because I like my yellows pretty saturated and almost to the point of being orangey. So it's gonna come in there. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? So, and now we're gonna go in and blend these again a little bit more, but we're gonna come up here. We've got that last glob of blue where the glue, blue and the green started making babies. And I'm gonna come back in again with a glob of pink up here. 
I'm gonna go a pretty generous glob because that blue is really, really saturated and it's gonna go bonkers on you if you're not careful. So um, again, dabbing my brush out so it's really not very wet. I'm just gonna take, start to work those together. So start to get a little bi flag love going on here. Okay, now see, I'm gonna turn this around so the pink is up on the top. We're gonna start working this. So we get the purple down here and the blue up top and I didn't give myself quite enough room. So I'm gonna go back in here and work this purple. Make that. Look how pretty this is coming together. Sorry, my space is getting a bit crowded here. But um, Laura was doing this on one of the new teacups and I said to her, oh my God, you're making equality. I love that, it's so cute. And look how pretty our plate is. Um, if you don't know this yet, we are, I we, me, the mouse in my pocket, I'm a huge, huge supporter and lover of the LGBT community. Um, if you have a problem with that, then the snark heart is not the place for you. Um, so I just wanted to say, you know, we love rainbows, we love pride, and we love the LGBTQ community, and we say gay here a lot. So um, I don't think we probably have many MAGAs here, but I just wanted to say that we love you, and we're going to blend for you, baby. So my paintbrush is wet again, and I'm just going to take and go blendy, blendy. Okay, it's going to get too much there, so I'm going to wipe that off. And look at how beautiful those colors are coming together. I'm going to rinse a little bit more. Um, I didn't do this quite as beautifully as Laura does. And I saved this one for last because it does make such an unholy mess. But um, isn't that just the neatest thing you ever saw? See, and then just blendy, blendy. Very Bob Rossi here with us. Getting that pretty, that kind of limey green down at the bottom now. Oop, rinse that off. Get a little bit of that limey green up at the top there. Um, so there you go. That That is uh, the quick and dirty demonstration of how you can use a beautiful blending painty technique to get your rainbows, to get your sunset. Um, it just, look at that, just with three colors. That's it, you know, and a little bit of second grade color theory. Uh, if you really want to see this masterfully done, again, our beautiful, amazing Laura is the girl to watch. But here we go. So this was just um, a 38 minute primer on unicorn spit. I have a lot more to learn. We're going to learn it together, you guys. We're going to love this, and we're going to take the world by storm. I'm so excited to see what you come up with with your own unicorn spit. Um, I will work on getting a sponsorship to see if I can get any kind of discount for you guys. Um, in the meantime, tag us. Tag me. Let me know what you think of it. Show me your new creations. Use them on the bookcases. Use them on your beautiful signage from... Um, by Misa, um, your beautiful signage from Right House Designs, any of those kind of things. Get out there, play with it, love it. Uh, just have the best time of your life and make some really cool shit. And one last thing, I'm going to show you our beautiful sky den that come out Nito Mosquito. Love that, guys. So um, I just have one more request of you. Please, if you have gotten any value out of this video, hit the like and subscribe. If you feel like there's anybody out there who could learn from this, uh, hit share. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or have any other experience. Um, please just go on out, experiment and play and have fun. And let's make more cool shit, guys. Thanks for coming to my talk and thanks for being a part of Snark Heart. I couldn't be anything without you guys. So have a great night. Thanks so much.